Hi, this is Sajan Bharatya and welcome to another episode of Tier Fire Success Stories. And today we have with us Nathaniel Kopa, founder of Alpine Linux. Nathaniel, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Yeah, if you look at Alpine, you know, it's it's a kind of a, a legendary distribution in its own capacity. It's like a backbone of containerized, you know, distributions. But it's also one of the, the oldest, been like almost 14 or 15 years old, right? So I want to understand from you when and why you started the project and what keeps you driving that you're still working on it, just the way Linux Torvalds has been working on Linux kernel for almost 50, 25 or 30 years now. So I uh, started this project uh, 14 years ago and I was working for a nonprofit organization and there was this uh, networking thing we were doing. We were building a, a VPN in the firewall and uh, there were some technical requirements that things needed to run from, from RAM, not using disks. And uh, what was out there wasn't really good enough. So I ended up uh, building my own thing or we ended up building our own thing and uh, it turned out to be become Alpine. And um, over the years, uh, things have changed. The containerization has changed. And I find it interesting that this concept of running from RAM, where you basically have a disposal, disposable installation, when it boots up, it's installed from scratch. And when you turn it off, it all goes away. It's pretty much similar to what you have in container world, where we have... Uh, disposable installations, disposable containers that you use them once and then take them away. So, so I think Alpine it's a very good fit for that. And as you say, it's like wow, 14 years now. So I'm asking myself why I continue doing these things. But uh, I think I do it because I love open source. Basically, I think it's amazing to see what you can accomplish when you cooperate with other people. When people cooperate. And also the Alpine community is very nice, uh, highly talented people, nice people. And I think yeah, I, I find great joy in working with those people. So, so I, uh, that's one motivator, motivating factor. But also the, the success we were having. I think it's kind of fun to see where Alpine is used. You can find so many. Uh, you can find Alpine in so many different places. You have them in containers. In, you, have, you can find them in phones, in data centers and so 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 that's also fun to to be part of something that's um, that's really big i think but uh, i also have to admit that at this point i also feel uh, responsible for for this so so i kind of feel responsible to keep doing it um, because there are many people depending on it uh, at this point. You mentioned that you uh, continue to work on it because you love open source. If you look at open source, when you started uh, the project and where it is today, a lot of things have changed. Back in those days, huh, you you pick open source to work on it at your free time because you're passionate, your hobby. Today, open source is paying salaries of a lot of people. You know, If you look at big corporations uh, or major projects like Kubernetes, Nobody's working on those projects in their free time. You know, they're they are on their payroll. So how do you how do you see this evolution of open source itself? And do you think that this commercialization of open source is actually good for the sustainability of open source? I think it's a good thing, and I think it's a necessary thing because uh, I mean, even the Alpine, I I have been sponsored to work full time on Alpine. Docker uh, paid me to do that, and uh, after that, Mirantis. Has been doing it, and I think it's like necessary. Otherwise, it uh, wouldn't been possible. Uh, and I think it's good also that. Uh, and I think it's actually amazing to see that you know big corporations that normally would uh, compete against each other now suddenly they cooperate and 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 understands that it's best for everyone that they cooperate and and contribute to open source and work together. On, on, on the technical part of it. And I think that's a nice thing. When you started Alpine, you mentioned the, the reason why you started it. And today it has kind of become one of the most popular OS for containers. How do you see Alpine evolve over years? Because 
uh, the use case has changed and there, you know, the, the way it is being used is relatively different than what you had in mind uh, in the beginning. So can you talk about the evolution of Alpine OS or Alpine Linux? Well, yes, uh, originally it was like uh, designed to run from RAM. So it was like installed in TempFS. Um, and over the time, it, it has become more traditional Linux installs on the host and now containers uh, as well. And, and I think it has been like a natural process. It has, it has naturally come that way. But Alpine still has some of, of the, this thinking that keep things small. Because when you run things from RAM, when you don't have any disk at all uh, at the runtime, you need to be, you need to keep it small. Uh, you don't have nowadays you have gigabytes of, of of ram but back in the day you had you had really limited resources uh, and we have kept that and that's one of the things that has um, has been driving to try keep it small and simple even if you know the the environment around has has uh, changed and i actually think it's a, a bit of a challenge to to you know, keep things small and keep things simple because while the world evolves around you and becomes more and more complicated, it, it really takes some effort to to fight the complications away and and keep things small. Which also means that you know the with the I mean with new use cases, new users. It also kind of create new challenges for the project itself. So, can you talk about what challenges you saw over the years because of those use cases and how you try to overcome those? The challenges has been most because of the success and the number of users has kind of exploded with Docker and the popularity that that come with that. Uh, so, so there have been. Um, uh, lots of more pull requests and, and contributions to deal with all that issue issues uh, coming up, and um, and, and that's uh, that has been challenging uh, to to deal with. But then you have also, you know, there have been more architectures been added, and more packages have been added to repository. So so the disks, it feels like the disks are always full, and there's never enough CPU to do the compiling, and never enough memory. But um, fortunately, there have been corporations and sponsors that have been provided us with, uh, with the needed hardware and the needed machines. For example, Linode has stepped up and provided us with uh, VMs for our infrastructure. We now run our GitLab instance and CI on, on Linode machines. And um, it, it couldn't be possible without the support that we have that we have from, from those uh, sponsors. But another thing that I have been found a challenge that I find somewhat interesting is that there are a lot of buggy software out there. And um, the C library we use, the masklibc, is different than the traditional Linux. So, so what happens is that when you run your software on Alpine Linux, you detect uh, bugs that you normally don't detect. Uh, lots of software does things that it uh, it shouldn't really do it, and then we report it and we we um, send a patch upstream often, and then over time things have improved and and be fixed. But then again, <laughs> detects a new class of uh, bugs that we're having, so it it can be the kind of exhausting that you have so many broken software out there. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's nice to see that there are other distros as well and incorporates with this, Void Linux, Adele Linux, Gen2, there are others also as well that are that are uh, contributing and, and helping in pushing fixes upstream. So, so even if it's like a challenge with all this broken software and you, you have to admit at some point that you cannot fix everything out there, it's, it's good to see that, um, that the open source community and other distros also help to, to to keep up with, uh, with those things. In the container world, a cloud native world, security is becoming a you know very serious topic. People are you taking security seriously. How secure is Alpine Linux? What are you doing to make sure that you know the workloads that are running there are kind of you know secure? 
Yeah, that's an interesting question. So um, that's one of the, the core things in, in Alpine. We want it to be uh, secure. Um, and one thing is to keep things simple. If you have fewer moving parts, then there are fewer things that can go wrong. And uh, many of those security issues that shows up out there comes from solutions to problems that shouldn't be in there in the first place. So, so you know, keeping the attack surface low uh, helps. It's of course not the the entire uh, response to it. Uh, we have also a um, hardened tool chain. So, so the tool chain we use, the C compiler we use, will will have settings defaults. So it will create the position independent exit executables will have state-of-the-art uh, securities uh, built in and um, you can you, have, you they are on they are enabled on default so you will have to explicitly turn them off to to not have them in there but of course that's a security is, is a it's a state it's not like a product so so it's something that's have to work on all the time and um, try fix CVs that comes in a timely manner and, and, and things like that. It's a, it, it is a fight, but uh, you know, you have to do it. Right. Uh, since you have been uh, managing running uh, the project for so long, and from what I hear from you is that what you value the most is the value that the project brings uh, to the community, uh, to itself. So I want to know, what is the core value of Alpine Linux? The slogan for Alpine is small, simple, and secure. So, so that's the technical part. We want the, the thing we build to be small, simple, and secure. But then um, I, I think there are also other values that I think is important and uh, that I find interesting. For example, that we are an independent distro. That we, we, we don't depend on a single company or, or something. It's an open source, open community-driven uh, distro. I also like the dog fooding principle that we eat our own dog food. And uh, I have been using Alpine myself for <laughs> since the beginning. I, I still run Alpine on my work desktop. Um, and most of our infrastructure is runs on Alpine, the website, the bug tracker, the mailing list. And they, they run on Alpine machines. Uh, we also used to run the DNS infrastructure ourselves, but uh, I have been more maybe pragmatic lately. So we have moved that to a hosted solution on Linode to make things a lot simpler. Because I think it's good you know, to have someone on your back when it comes to the critical infrastructure and good to don't need to worry about it and 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 just have someone deal with that so i think leonard is good for 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 that because it, they provide alpine hosting it's a nice developer culture and and things like that so i think that's um, pretty much with the values that that we have another value that i appreciate much in in, in our communities uh, or something that I, uh, that's one of the major goals for me in, in, in the Alpine communities is to have a friendly community that we treat each other good. We have respect with, for each other and we try to avoid, you know, lots of the, we don't, we don't accept that we are uh, harassing each other and, and things like that. And sometimes it can get hot, but we try to always keep a friendly community, regardless of, of, of what happens. I, I think that's important. You mentioned Linode. Why did you choose Linode? They are sponsoring us, so so they are giving us uh, machines, um, and it's a good good product uh, they have. They uh, they have DNS uh, hosting. They also provide Alpine Linux images. There are not so many uh, VMs or so, so many hosting providers that actually provide Alpine. So I think that's, um, that's that's a good choice, and also they have this developer culture and and, and things like that that I think is uh, is good. Also independence, it it makes it easy to to eat our own dog food. 
that's uh, that's some of the things that I appreciate. Also, the people working there are very friendly, very nice to to work with. Never had any issues with the support and and things. Always, you know, um, they always have our back, and I, I think that's. Um, that's the thing I appreciate very much. I mean, if you look at today's world, uh, containers, cloud native is the future, uh, especially with this, uh, the current crisis that we are going through with the pandemic. Companies are moving to the cloud. They are moving away from uh, all those, you know, physical um, operations. What future did you see for Alpine? And how do you further see its evolution? Oh, that's a good question. I wish I wish I knew. Uh, so, so one of the things I would like uh, to see in the future that Alpine becomes more popular in, in on on the host because right now uh, Alpine is much used in the containers, but the the host running those containers are normally other distros and and, and you run Kubernetes on on, on other things. So. I, th- I think it would be nice to have like a small host uh, operating system that can run Kubernetes clouds, for example, and that would be based on on Alpine. That's one thing I think would be nice to see. Um, but also some other architectures. We are uh, like MIPS, improve the support for MIPS and uh, network appliances and and things like that would would be nice. It's not. It's not high priorities for me, but I think it would be nice to uh, to see that. And actually, also, uh, I think it would be fun to see Linux on more on uh, Alpine Linux more on the Linux desktop, which is you know a, a big challenge. Uh, it would be fun. It's not a priority, but I think it would be be nice to see more more there to have small nice. Linux desktop based on Alpine. Nathaniel, thank you so much for taking your time out and talking to me today and uh, to talk about Alpine Linux. I'm a huge fan of the project. Uh, So it was a really great experience talking to you again. Uh, We have spoken earlier, but it was over email. So it was a great experience. And I actually love, I would love to talk to you again at some point as the project further grows and finds new use cases. Thank you, Sopnil. It was very nice to talk to you, and it's nice to also see you on the uh, on the camera and talk to you in person. So thank you very much.